Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Flink Forward, brought to you by Data Artisans. This is George Gilbert. We are at Data Artisans Conference Flink Forward. It is for the Apache Flink community, sponsored by Data Artisans and all the work they're doing uh, to move Flink forward and to surround it with additional value that makes building stream processing applications accessible to mainstream companies. Right now though, we are not talking to a mainstream company, we're talking to Greg Fee um, from Lyft, not Uber. <laughs> And um, Greg, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with uh, what you're doing with Flink. What's the first use case that that comes to mind that really exercises its capabilities? Sure. Yeah. So the process of adopting Flink at Lyft has really started with a use case, which was we're trying to make. Uh, machine learning more accessible across all of Lyft. So we already use machine learning in quite a few applications, but we want to make sure it, we use machine learning as much as possible. We really think that that's the path forward. And one of the fundamental difficulties with that is having consistent feature generation between these offline batchy uh, training scenarios and the online real-time streaming scenarios. Um, and the unified processing engine of Flink really helps us bridge that gap. So when you say unified processing engine, are you saying the, the fact that you can manage code and data um, as sort of an application version and some of the either code or data is part of the model and so you're versioning? Um, I mean, that's, that's even a step beyond what I'm talking about. Just, okay. just the, the, the basic fundamental ability to have one piece of business logic that you can apply at the batch bulk layer and then in the real time layer. Yeah. So that's the sort of like the core, core you, pieces of what Flink gives you. Are you running both batch and uh, uh, streaming on, on Flink? Yes, and using that's right. the So you're using like the Windows um, or just periodic execution on a stream to simulate batch. That's right, so we have, uh, so feature generation, crosses a broad spectrum of possible like use cases in Flink. Yeah. Um, and this is where we sort of transition more into what DA platform could give for us. So we're looking to have thousands of different features across all of our machine learning models. So having a, a platform that can help us host many of these little programs running, help with the application lifecycle of each of these features as we version them over time. So we're very excited about what DA platform can you tell can us a little more us. about how the stream processing helps you with the with the feature selection and engineering, and is it that you're um, you're using streaming or simulated batch um, or ba batch using the same programming model to train these models, and you're using sort of you're picking out different derived data? Is that is that how it's working? So a typical life cycle is there's going to be a feature engineering stage. So the data scientist is looking at their data, trying to figure out patterns in the data, and they're going to like how you apply Flink there, is as you come up with potential algorithms for how you generate your feature, you can run that through Flink, generate some data, apply a machine learning model on top of it, and sort of play around with that data, prototype things. Oh, so what uh, you're doing is offline, or out of the platform, you're doing the feature selection and engineering, right. then you attach a stream to it that has just the relevant, perhaps the relevant uh, features, right. and then that model gets sort of uh, well, maybe not yet, but eventually versioned as part of the application, which includes the application, the rest of the application logic and the data. Right, so like some of the stuff that was touched on this morning at the keynotes, the versioning and uh, maintaining machine learning applications, it's a much, it was a very complex uh, ecosystem there. So being able to say, okay, go from the prototype stage, doing stuff in batch, to doing stuff in production in real time, and then being able to version those over time to move to better and better versions of, of the future generation is um, very important to us. I don't know if this is the most politically correct thing, but you just explained it better than everyone else we've talked to about right. <laughs> how it all fits together with the machine learning. So once you've got that in place, it sounds like you're using the DA platform, um, as well as you know, perhaps some extensions for machine learning to sort of add that as a separate life cycle um, besides the application code. Um, then is that going to be the sort of enterprise-wide platform for 
deploying, uh, developing and deploying machine learning applications? Yes, certainly. Um, we think there's probably a broad ecosystem to do machine learning. It's a very like sort of wide open area. Um, certainly, my agenda is to push it across the company and, and get as many things running in this system as possible. I think the real time aspects of it. Uh, and the unifying aspect of what Flink can give us and the, the platform can give us in terms of the, the life cycle. Life so cycles. are you set up uh, essentially like um, where you're the like a shared resource or uh, a shared service, which is the platform group. Right. And then all the business units adopt that platform and build their apps on it. Right, so my, my initiative is part of a greater data science platform at Lyft. So my goal is to have we have you know, hundreds of data scientists who are going to be looking at this data, giving me little features that they want to do, and we're just probably going to end up numbering, numbering in the thousands of features, being able to generate all those, maintain all those little programs. And, and, and when you say generate all those little programs, that's the application logic and the, and the model specific to that application. That's right, and, well, so there's, there's features there, that are typically shared across many models. Okay. So there's like two layers of things oh, happening Oh, so here. you're managing features separately from the models. That's right. Interesting, okay, haven't heard that. And, and is the application manager tooling gonna help address that, or is that custom stuff that you have to do? Um, so I think, I think there's a, a potential that that's, that's the way we're gonna manage the, uh, the model stuff as well, but it's... That, that you would put it in the area, application yeah. platform. Right. Then that's sort of at the boundary of sort of what you're doing right now, or what you will be doing shortly. Right, it's all, it's a matter of use case of whether it's online or offline and how how, you, how it fits best in with the rest of the Lyft engineering system. When, when you're talking about um, your application landscape, do you have lots of streaming applications that feed other streaming applications going through a hub, or are they sort of more discrete you know, artifacts, uh, discrete, discrete programs, and, and then when do you keep state within the stream processor and when do you have it in a shared database? That's a that's a lot of questions. It's kind of a kind of a deep question. So the goal is to have a central hub where sort of all of our event data passes through it, and that allows us to so decouple. So that's to be careful. That's not a database central hub. That's a it's like an, a an the, event hub. Event hub. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so an event hub in the middle allows us to decompose the different uh, so sort of smaller programs, which again are probably going to number in the thousands. So that like being able to have different parts of the company, maintain their own part of the overall system is very important to us. Um, I, I think we'll probably see Flink as the major player in terms of how those programs run, but we'll probably be shooting things off to other systems um, like Druid, like Hive, like Presto, um, as Elasticsearch, data. As, as all derived data from these Flink jobs. Uh, and then also, um, pushing data directly out into some of our production systems to feed into these machine, machine learning decisions. Okay, this is quite, this sounds like the most ambitious infrastructure that, that we've heard and that it sounds like pretty ubiquitous. Uh, I mean, we want, we want to be a machine learning first company, so it's, it's So, it's, now, it's help everywhere. me clarif clarify for me when, because this is, you know, for mainstream companies who've programmed with a, you know, DBMS as a shared state manager for decades, help, help explain to them when you would still use a DBMS, DBMS for shared state and, and when you would start using the distributed state that's embedded in, a, uh, in Flink um, and the derived data you know, at the endpoints, at the sinks? Uh, so I mean, I guess this, this kind of gets into your, exactly your use cases and you know, your, your p opinions and thoughts about uh, how to use these things best, but... Uh, your from, opinion <laughs> is what we're interested right, in. From where I'm coming from, um, I see basically databases as potential one sync for this data. They do some things very well, right? They do structured queries very well. Uh, you can have ind indices built off that, aggregates, really feed into a lot of visualization stuff. Yeah. Um, but from where I'm sitting, like we're really moving away from databases as something that feeds production data. We've got other stores to do that that are sort of more tailored like, towards those scenarios. When, when you say to feed production data, this is transaction capture or data capture. Right, so I mean, we don't have a lot of uh, atomic transactions um, outside of payments at Lyft. Most of the stuff is eventually consistent. So we have stores more like Dynamo or Cassandra, uh, HBase, 
that, that feed a lot of our production data. And, and those databases, are they for like ambient information, like influencing an interaction, or it doesn't sound like automating a transaction. It would be, it sounds like context that helps, um, that helps with analytics, but very separate from the OLTP apps. That's right, so I mean we have, you can kind of bifurcate the company into the data that's used in production to make decisions that are like facing the user, and then our analytics backend that really helps business analysts and like the executives make, make decisions about how we proceed. Oh, and so the, that second part, the backend is more like operational efficiency right. and, and coding new, process, new business processes to support new ways of doing business, but the customer facing stuff specifically like with payments, that still needs a tradi traditional OLTP. Right. But they're not, that, that, those use cases aren't growing that much. That's right. So, so basically we have very specific use cases for like a traditional database, um, but in terms of capturing the type of scale and the type of growth that, that we're looking for at Lyft, uh, we think some of the other storage engines suit those better. So in, in that use case, would the um, OLTP DBMS be at the front end of this? Would it, would it be a source or a sync? It sounds like it's a source. Um, so we actually do it both ways, right? So it's great to get our transactional data flowing through our streaming system. There's a lot of uh, value in, in that, but also then pushing it out back to it, uh, some of the aggregate results to a, a DBMS um, helps with our analytics pipeline. Okay, okay. Well, this is actually really interesting. So where do you see the, the DA platform helping you know, going forward? Is it, is it something that you don't really need because you've built all that scaffolding um, to help with sort of application lifecycle management? Or, um, or do you see it something that'll help sort of push Flink sort of enterprise-wide? I think the DA platform will really help sort of people adopt um, Flink at an enterprise level. Uh, maintaining the applications is, is a core part of what it means to run, uh, run it as a business. And so we're looking at DA Platform as a way of managing our applications. Um, and I think, like I'm just talking about one, I mostly talked about one application yeah. we have it for Flink at Lyft. We have many other Flink programs actually running that are sort of unrelated to my project. But, what about uh, managing non-Flink applications, do you need an uh, application manager? Is it, is it okay that it's associated with, with one uh, service or platform like Flink? Or is there, is there a desire you know, among bleeding edge customers to have an overall sort of infrastructure management, application management kind of uh, Sweet. Yes, for sure. You're touching on you're touching on something that I, I've started to push inside of Lyft, which is the need for an overall application lifecycle management product. And would that that's not plug into specific. these? The, plug into like the DA platform and you know whatever the, the say Confluent you know equivalent is, or is it going to directly tie to the you know operational capabilities or the the functional capabilities, not the management capabilities? In other words, would it plug into the like? core Flink, core Kafka, core Spark, that sort of stuff? Um, I think that's, that's sort of largely to be determined. Uh, if you go back to sort of how distributed system design works uh, typically, we have a user plane, which is going to be our, our data users. Then you end up with, like, the thing that we're probably most familiar with, which is our data plane, like technologies like Flink and Kafka, Hive, all those guys. What's missing in the middle right now is a control plane to map from the user desires, from the user intention, to what we do with all of that data plane stuff. So you launch a new program, maybe you need a new Kafka topic, maybe you need to provision Kafka higher, you need to get some Flink programs running, and whether that talks directly to Flink and goes against Kubernetes or something like that, or whether it talks to a higher level, like like more application-specific platform, Yeah, I think you know, it's certainly a lot easier if we have some of these platforms in because the way. Because they give you better abstractions right. to talk to the platforms. That's right. That's interesting. Okay, geez, we learned something really, really interesting with each, with each interview. Uh, um, I'm, I'm curious though, if you look out um, a couple years, um, how much of your 
um, application landscape will be continuous processing. And, and is that something you can see mainstream enterprises adopting or has decades of work with you know, batch and interactive sort of made people too difficult to learn something so radically new? Uh, I mean, I think it's all going to be driven by the business needs um, and whether the value is there for people to make that transition because it, uh, it is quite expensive to invest in new infrastructure. For companies like Lyft, where we're trying to make decisions very quickly, you know, users get down to like two seconds makes a difference for the customer. So we're trying to be as you know real time as possible. Uh, I used to work at Salesforce. Salespeople are a little less sensitive to these things, and you know, it's very, very that's traditional world. And but even Salesforce is moving towards you know, like that. The, that's, that's even Salesforce is, is moving towards streaming processing. Oh, so really? Like, I, I think we're going to see it sort of slowly be adopted across the big I enterprises. I imagine that's probably for their analytics. That's where they're starting, of course, yeah. Oh, okay. So um, this was uh, a little more affirmation onto um, how we're going to see perhaps the control plane evolve and the interesting use cases that you're up to. And uh, um, I hope we can see you back uh, next year and you can tell us how far you've proceeded. I certainly hope so, yeah. This was really mm -hmm. interesting. So um, Greg Fee from Lyft. We will hopefully see you again. And this is George Gilbert. We're at the Data Artisans Flink Forward Conference in San Francisco. We'll be back after this break. Thank you.